2010 is the 65th anniversary of the end of the Holocaust. Those who survive continue to remind us of what we can learn from their experiences. They speak of pain and loss, of strength and survival, and their wish for a legacy of hope. I had a happy childhood. I had two sisters and loving parents with an extended family of whom I was very fond. My father had a flour mill in Piotrkov to Bonalski, Poland. But what I remember most was the vibrancy and dynamism that was so characteristic of the time. But all this changed in September 1939 when the Nazis entered my hometown and ordered us to move into an enclosed area. They forced us to live in terrible conditions. Deportation started on the 14th of October 1942 and lasted for seven days. A reign of terror followed in the ghetto. One day, the Nazis rounded up 530 people, including my mother and my sister, Lucia, who was only eight years old. They were kept in the synagogue for two weeks before being marched to the nearby forest and shot. My childhood ended in the ghetto. The ghettos were temporary places where the Nazis held the Jews. From there, they would deport them to concentration and extermination camps. When I was a little girl, my mother gave me a little golden pendant that I treasured very much. Before the Nazis took us in the death camp, my brother put it in the heel of my shoe. My family with me was taken and put in a cattle train. They put us in one carriage, about 70 people, men, women, children, and babies. We were the very cramped. They put two buckets in, one with water, the other for whom I am waste. They closed the door, and like that, we traveled five days. The guards had told us to hand over all our possessions, especially gold and silver. They would kill you if you failed to do so. The pendant in my shoe stayed secret. When they let us out from the cattle train, we were so happy to see sunlight again. However, our relief was short-lived. We had arrived in Auschwitz-Birkenau. The SS officer, Dr. Mengele, was waiting with a stick in his hand. With one movement of his hand, Dr. Mangele had the power of life and death. My mother, brother, sister were sent straight to the crematorium. Auschwitz-Birkenau was the largest death and concentration camp in the Nazi empire. Nearly every day, people were killed in its gas chambers and their bodies incinerated. The Nazis built concentration and extermination camps across Europe, setting out to murder the entire Jewish community. Many other groups who did not fit the Nazi ideal were also persecuted and murdered. This included Poles, political prisoners, people from the Slavic nations, Soviet prisoners of war, the Roma and Sinti, disabled people, gay men and lesbians, Jehovah's Witnesses and black Germans. I'm a Christian. I was arrested in Hungary for being part of the resistance movement against Nazi hatred. When we got to Auschwitz, those of us who had not been sent to be gassed immediately 
were pushed into a large hall. We were told to take all our clothes off except for our shoes. We were then set on little stools and the hair on our entire body was shaved off while SS guards stood around, laughed and jeered at us. We were then pushed into another hall where we were showered with cold water. Once a week we were marched to be decontaminated that meant we were showered and given another set of heavily disinfected clothing. The shower unit and the gas chambers looked the same, so you never knew if you were going to get gassed or just showered. On one occasion, on the way to the showers, I saw a group of gypsy women in their traditional clothes breaking stones by the roadside. I didn't realize that they were also victims. It was only a long time after my liberation that I found out about the many different groups that had been sent to their death in the concentration camps by the Nazis. When the Soviet army liberated Auschwitz-Birkenau in January 1945, the extent of the horror was discovered. One by one, the concentration camps were liberated by Allied troops. The SS officers tried to hide what was happening by destroying the gas chambers and burning records, but they could not erase the truth from the memories of those who survived. A small number of concentration camp survivors made their home in Britain after the Holocaust. They joined many other refugees who fled Europe before the war, including those who came as children on the kinder transport. My two sisters also survived Auschwitz and are now living in Israel. In spite of all the suffering, we kept our hope because without hope, we would have definitely perished. We hoped against all odds and this gave us the possibility of survival. This little pendant is the only surviving possession that I have from home, and I wear it in memory of the family I lost. I did not harbor revenge nor hatred. I put all my energy in creating a positive and meaningful life. In a matter of nine years after my liberation, I had established my career as well as becoming a British weightlifting champion. I represented Britain, my adopted country, in many international competitions. I traveled the world and made many friends from different countries and different cultures. Tolerance and respect for others should be the guideline for living in harmony with one another. I continue to be an active member of my church. I hope that future generations can pass on loving kindness and help one another whenever possible. Since the end of the Holocaust, other societies have been victims of genocide in Rwanda, Bosnia, Cambodia and Darfur. This year, on Holocaust Memorial Day, let's pledge to listen to the memories of survivors and let their words influence how we live our lives today. We can strive for an inclusive society where we celebrate difference. We can work to create a future that is free from the dangers of exclusion and persecution. We can all learn from the survivors of the Holocaust and become part of the legacy of hope.